The world is becoming an increasingly networked place. Social networks and advances in communications devices have brought dramatic changes in recent years. And we could be on the verge of even more significant changes in the way we interact with each other and with the environment around us. Clearly, we're at a point now of enormous change. I think this is very much an inflection point in human history, where you know the last century saw us land on the moon. My grandfather's generation went from you know, horse and buggy to the moon rocket. Just amazing. This generation now is going to go, I think, toward the augmented human, where we look at uh, you know interfaces to computers as being very, very fundamental to what it is to be human. Joe Paradiso is a scientist working at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in a centre known as the Media Lab. Early in his career, Joe worked in particle physics and developed a deep interest in the machinery used at giant particle accelerator facilities, particularly the sensing equipment. At the Media Lab, he is using his technical expertise in combination with artistic creativity to develop a revolutionary new computer interface, which he refers to as a responsive environment. So we're being surrounded by sensors more and more, we're bringing them into our environments on the back of products we already have because they have more and more sensors in them. They're all becoming networked because everything is, is part of the net. So every sensor is part of a device that's connected. I mean, the phone is the first example of that, but it's becoming everything now. So I see responsive environments as being, in a way, an electronic nervous system that covers the whole planet with sensors and actuators that are deeply networked that are all connected to each other. And I think the question is, how do we connect with that? Joe's project, known as Doppel Lab, is designed to collect data from the environment that surrounds us and to visualise this information using a computer animation. Joe and his team are currently testing the device on their own building at MIT. So here's the, the building, here's the building without, with walls translucent so you can look inside. So you can see the undulating green snake, so to speak. That's basically looking at uh, at the audio level and the motion. So there are people moving here, that's what the undulation means when it goes up and down. And the audio level is the amount of, the amount of uh, balls that are stacked up. It's like an audio meter. And again, we can see people's tweets. They have a lot to do with uh, how people use media technology now to get the word out. So you can see they, they tweet quite a bit uh, about international comments mainly, international topics mainly. And uh, it's showing up near their office. So if we go near people's office, we'll see their tweets appear. So you can see the social buzz of the lab as well as people moving around. Doppel Lab is essentially a framework that we developed where we uh, use a commercial game engine, uh, which are built for interaction. They're built for high-speed graphics and animation. They're built for multiplayer use as well, so you can network them. So it's, it's perfect for rendering sensor data. Um, and we've built a set of uh, protocols to get sensor data into the game engine very efficiently. And then we have a, a set of visualizations we put together ourselves, where we uh, have to think aesthetically. That's the beauty of the students I have at the Media Lab. They're all great technical people. So they're solid engineers, some of them are physicists, um, uh, computer scientists. And uh, they also have this aesthetic feeling, sometimes for music, sometimes for design. And in Doppel Lab, we've, we've really tapped into that. But what I'm more interested in is what, is, what are everyday people going to use it for? Because this whole idea of sensory augmentation is a huge one. It's going to affect all of us. And Doppel Lab kind of pokes at that in a fairly abstract setting, uh, perhaps again in a setting that's uh, useful for people to, to monitor building. But what is everybody going to do, use it in their Android, for example, for? If you put it on an on a Android or an iPhone or a mobile device, it becomes more like what we would call a tricorder, you know, going back to the old Star Trek, right? The universal device that has all knowledge of the environment. As well as visualizing the environment, another important part of Doppel Lab is to explore ways in which people can interact with their environments. One of the projects Joe and his team are working on is to develop a high-tech wristband that can monitor environmental conditions within a living space, such as an office. The idea is that somebody wearing this device could communicate with the local systems, such as the air conditioning and the lights. So this is the RISC-K. This is the working prototype that we have built. This is the battery. This is the actual functional part of it. And the battery can clasp onto a charger, a little bit like what you see in the Apple chargers. And of course, it magnetically will just 
coupled to the, the person's wrist. So you put it on like that. It's got a whole suite of sensors here. It measures temperature, humidity, uh, integrated activity. Uh, it also can sense the lighting and uh, the individual modulation from different lamps in the environment and separate them out. It's got a radio on it as well. There's a tremendous amount of interest in this. Uh, I'm sure you will see things like this appear within, within years. Of course, already we have the Nike wristband, others that are dedicated to specific purposes. As the environment becomes more networked, you'll see the wristband become something more like the phone. It's something connected to this whole infrastructure of applications and possibilities.